The Latin Club will be meeting to cook ancient Roman cuisine during X Block on Friday, May 9th. In the foods room, C105, all students are welcome to come help and sample some fermented fish sauce. Oh, goody. See Miss Alexander for a pass. All right, it's that time again. Jeff Taylor, buddy, where are you? Time to do some news. He's probably... In the criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups the police who investigate crime, and the district attorneys who prosecute the offenders. These are their stories. Chief, I can't be partners with this guy. He doesn't play well with others. All right, get the hell in here, Jenkins. what I do now, Chief? Sit your ass down, Jenkins. 20 cars, a diner, and three people shot. Yeah. Well, it was all worth it just to see that little boy smile. Damn it. The press is gonna have a field day with this one. You gotta start playing by the rules, Jenkins, or I'll drum you out of the department. Yeah. Well, I'll start playing by the rules when the bad guys do. You could take my badge, but you can never take my heart. Chief, some information just came through on the dispatch. It's at the high school, apparently. It's not a pretty sight. All right, I guess we'll leave right now. Sit your ass down, Jenkins. I'm gonna need you to stay here for a little conversation. Rando, you can leave now. Well, we'll meet you at the scene in a little bit. I don't plan on this taking too long. Yes, sir. Listen here, Chief. I flipped over a dozen cars and burned down another diner to see that little boy smile. I've had my badge taken away so many times, it's like a damn revolving door. There's nothing you can do to prevent me from keeping my garden snake free. Look, if it was anyone but you, they'd be in deep shit. But I like keeping you on a slightly longer leash. I'll forgive it this time, but you guys start playing by the rules, Jenkins. I know what you're trying to do, but I've got the mayor breathing down my neck. This is the fourth partner you've had this month, Jenkins. And if you go through another one, I don't know what I'll do. Yeah? Well, if you keep lining them up, I'll keep knocking them down, Chief. They're all dominoes to the goose. Alright, get the hell out of my office, Jenkins. You better straighten up and fly right, or you'll be walking a beat downtown. Oh, yeah? I'd crook down and fly left to save that family again. And maybe you can partner Randy up with someone who plays by the rules. The goose won't back down for no one. What have you found out? Well, Officer Jenkins, I've cleared the, cleared the scene of any bystanders. Uh, briefly talked to everyone, and of course, no one said they saw anything. Lights were off at the time, apparently. So let me get this straight. He was alive, the lights went off, when they came back on, he was dead? That's exactly right, sir. Looks like... According to the wounds on the body, he was killed by a stabbing. Definitely first degree murder. This was intentional and planned. But those puncture wounds are not normal for a knife. They're circular. What could have caused them? What kind of animal makes circular knives? Isn't it obvious? I've seen this a thousand times. He was stabbed with an icicle. Uh, simply melts and leaves no trace, but a puddle. And that's right there. Amazing. All right, I've seen all I need to see. Maybe one day you'll learn, Rookie. Let's go back to the station, get some information from the autopsy, and see which witnesses we have to call.
are we doing here? Every good case takes time. I've solved more cases here than I can remember. Listen here, Randy. I know who the hell you think you are, or what kind of ship you think I run around here, but you listen to me. I call the shots. You hearing me? Listen, Goose. I might be young, but I'm not useless. I was first in the academy, and I already have three convictions. Get off your high horse there, rookie. They give the easy cases to the newbies. The chief must have seen I don't know what you, but if you're the same as the other detectives, you'll be out in less than a week. The mongoose works alone now. All right, then. What's the plan? I've seen enough murders to know there's always a motive behind the killing. This ain't no negligent homicide. But who would have a motive? Everyone loves Joe. Use your goddamn head and think. Someone must have a grudge against him and benefit from him being gone. Well, maybe Jeff Taylor, but I can't really see him doing it. Now you're thinking. He's probably jealous that Joe got the anchor job over him, and he got bumped to lousy sports. Bedford always loses. He doesn't get any credit. Joe steals the spotlight. He wanted them gone so he could have the show to himself. He must have... That's a lead, but we can't jump to conclusions. Let's go to his house and collect some evidence. Maybe interrogate him a little bit. Maybe you're not half bad, Randy. But don't get too cocky over there. This case ain't over yet. What are you doing here? You can't question me. Listen, Jeff. If you had slowed down, we could have talked. But the fact that you kept running was probable cause, and that's why we're in here. We can arrest you. Continuing to run can make you an accessory, or even the prime suspect. Fine, I guess. What do you want to know? Listen, Jeff. Where were you the morning of May 3rd? I was writing my report. I couldn't have done it. Joe was acting strange. He said he had some news that was important that he had to tell the entire school. Oh yeah? How do we know you were actually writing it then? Check the timestamp on my phone. We'll see about that. Listen, Mr. Taylor, we know how hard it is to be a two-sport JV athlete and a straight B student, but everyone cracks. I've been doing this for 20 years, and I've seen so many innocent kids go down from the stress. I've got nothing to hide, honest. Then why did you start running when you saw us? I got scared, that's all. Listen, all I know is that some people are getting annoyed by all the jokes Joe cracks on VHS Live. I don't know. Maybe they got annoyed enough to kill him. Listen, Jeff. We'll see you soon. Real soon. Here's your brewskies, fellas. Jeff was surprisingly helpful. So tell me, how do you do it? You're the most hardened cop in the whole precinct. How do you do it every day? Well, Randy... I don't tell this to everybody, but we seem to be working pretty well together, and it might motivate us to help us solve this case. <sighs> Mostly I've been in the force trying my hardest to save money for my daughter. She needs surgery. 
until a few years ago when my first partner died. I've been doing it for him too ever since. Who was your first partner? I've heard a lot about him, but no one's ever told me too much. Just no details. He was a great man. There's no words that would do him any justice. Alright, there's a lot of respect you've shown me tonight. But clearly, we've hit our limits. Back to the case. Anything you can think of from your great history, give us an edge. Well, you know, now that you brought him up, there was this case I was working on with my first partner. We were working on it for years, but it went cold. It was about this crime syndicate leader in Bedford. His name, Mr. Krinameth Pong Shi Win. You know, this crime reminds me an awful lot of the ones he used to plan. I've heard of him. But he doesn't seem like the type to pull the trigger himself. You know, when we were investigating him, we could never find him, never put him behind bars. But we found a few of his trigger men. One that stands out was this guy. He was deranged. Killed a monkey. Now, the monkey was a little too curious for his own good. But we got the man. He was often referred to as the man in the yellow hat. You did say it, the crops. But they were all talking about the man in the yellow jacket. Wait a minute. That means the killer is... You sick bastard. You have the right to remain silent when questioned. Anything you say or do may be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to consult an attorney before speaking to the police or have an attorney present during questioning. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed to you before any questioning. If you decide to answer any questions now without an attorney present, you will still have the right to stop answering questions at any time. Knowing and understanding your rights as I have explained them to you, are you willing to answer my questions without an attorney present? You piece of shit. You think you can murder Joe and then kill my partner and get away with it? did it, didn't you? Nah, man. I want a lawyer. Lawyers are a pain in the ass. Don't you want to be a bro and talk? I know my rights. <sighs> Dude. Damn it! Here's your phone call. Yo, I'm in trouble. I'm being interrogated by the pigs. Yeah. I know I got a right to an attorney. Are you in legal trouble? Are these pigs getting up in your business? Call us on our toll-free number today, and we'll straighten things out for you. Don't believe us? Check out these real testimonials from our actual customers. There I was, just driving around my car, minding my own business, when the cops pulled me over and accused me of smoking meth in my car. So they brought me down to the station, but luckily, I know my rights. So I called Weissman and Abue. And then the next day, I'm back in the streets, burning one with my homies. Thanks, Weissman and Abue. Hey, hey, hey. What the H E double hockey sticks do you think you're doing to my client? Get out of here and stop harassing my client, you pigs. You guys can have your time. He'll talk eventually. Oh man, it's a good thing we got here. 
fundamental rights are about to be violated. In these situations, I figured I'd need real criminal lawyers. Show. How are you today, Michael? Uh, the police have been treating you well and haven't violated any of your constitutional rights. But if they have, that could help us out in court, am I right? All right, enough of the pleasantries. Let's get down to business. So in order to convict you of a criminal charge, the prosecutor is going to have to prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. This is a pretty lofty standard, and during the trial we feel that we can raise such a reasonable doubt. From what we can gather, the prosecutors are spending a lot of time and energy on this case, so we're going to have to hear your side of the story before we can start a defense. There aren't any first-hand witnesses that are accusing you or anyone else of the crime because of the blackout, so we have a pretty solid alibi already. However, if you did commit the crime you're accused of and believe there may be strong evidence against you, you can tell us. We can try and work out a plea bargain for you, shortening your prison sentence for information that could help incriminate the infamous crime syndicate leader, Mr. Pong Chi Win. I didn't do anything wrong. Now let's discuss my side of the story. All right, but first, let's discuss payments. Mr. Taylor, can you please describe for the jury what happened that fateful morning? Well, it all started off like a usual show. Joe was listening to his pump-up music. Lauren was trying to figure out how to pronounce the names on the uh, birthday list. I was writing my report. Girls cross lost. Girls tennis won, but second doubles lost, as usual. Objection. No offense. Please continue with the events of the crime, Mr. Taylor. Okay. So, it was going just like any other show. Joe was making his usual jokes, but we had a lot of guests that day. So we need to hurry the show along. Some history teacher had complained that two of his students were being late to class, even though they came well before others. Just before Joe was about to call me up, the lights went dark. There was screaming, chaos. And when the lights came back up, he was dead. Is it true that with all the other guests in the room, that there would be reasonable doubt that our client committed the murder? Leading. Drawn. Another, is it true that there are rumors flying around about other possible criminals? Objection, you're saying? You've been here long enough, Mr. Oblay, to know how to ask a question. Don't make me call the bar again. My client, the one who killed our victims? I cannot say definitively, one way or the other. Warm him up. Get him comfortable, and then I'll put him down in front of the jury. Let's get the scum locked up. <clears throat> Can you tell the jury your name? Michael Giuseppe Parisi. But my friends call me Mike Six Tolls Parisi. And what were you doing on VHS Live on the day of question? I was there to make an announcement for the Interact Club. They needed someone to do that day's pay it forward. So I volunteered. And what did you do when the lights went out? The studio is much smaller than people think. I tried to stay calm, but within the chaos I was pushed slightly and had to get out of the way. So I moved to the other side of the room to get into space. I'll take it from here. Mr. Parisi, is it or is it not true that you have scars on your hand? Yeah but I don't see the relation. When did they appear? Objection! Relevance! Let me continue this line of questioning. It'll make sense. I don't know, a few days ago? Specifically? I'm not sure. Wednesday, maybe? This is a shot from when you were uh, on BHS Live, and there are no scars. This is an image of his hands. When we booked him, as you can tell, the scars are a few days old. Now, Mike, how did you get those scars? I don't know. Maybe somebody scraped me in the dark. I mean, it got pretty crazy in there. 
I see. So have you ever been to the restaurant of Kanun? Yeah, I mean, I eat there sometimes. Do you know this man? Yes, I do. That's Kritimeth. Do you know that he's on the FBI's most wanted list and has specific connections to that restaurant? I was unaware. Were you? Don't lie to me. What were you doing with him at Kanoon? It wasn't me. That's all you need to know. I've been in enough trials to know when I'm getting my chain yanked, son. Perjury is another conviction you don't want. Let's hear the truth. The world wants to know. Fine. It all started like this. Rando, you're going to make it. I'm not going through that again. Not now. Not ever. We got him. We got him good. Mike's testimony helped us get Kritimef. We got him behind bars too. You not only helped us solve this case, but the case, the, the last case that I worked on with my first partner. And for that, I'll be forever grateful. You did it, Rando. You earned it. He called me.